Thrill Seekers. That was their Red Hot by Robert Johnson, my version of it. And what I want to talk to you about today requires a little bit of a trigger warning. There's my trigger warning. Get it? Okay, if you don't get it, you're not old enough. But uh, it really does. Uh, and so if you're upset uh, by hearing horrible things, then you probably don't want to watch this video. So that's my warning. A couple of, what was it, a month or I don't know, a little while ago, I did a couple of videos about the Dalai Lama and some of the things he was involved in, including Shoko Asahara and promoting Shoko Asahara, who was a mass murderer in Japan. Back when I lived in Japan, he committed mass murder on uh, the Tokyo subway lines, of which I was riding the day that he committed the mass murder on it, uh, although I was on a different line from one of the ones that, I think there were three lines or four that were attacked, but I was on a different one lucky for me. Anyhow, I was there that day, so it's it's kind of a thing for me, you know, uh, having been there when it happened. Now, in that video, or in one of those videos, I had mentioned something like, yeah, people imagine that Tibet before the Chinese took over was this lovely paradise, lovely Buddhist paradise where everybody was meditating. There were all these lamas around. It was Shangri-La. Actually, Shangri-La, the concept of Shangri-La, this kind of paradise place in the mountains, is a mispronunciation of Shambhala, and it does actually refer to Tibet. It refers to kind of a 19th century idea of this wonderful place that Tibet was supposed to be. Well, Tibet in the 19th century and the early 20th century, before the Chinese took it over, was not a paradise at all. And I said this on the video. I said it was a theocracy. And theocracies are usually bad places. Think of Saudi Arabia or Iran, places like that, where the religious people have taken over uh, the government and run it as a kind of religious state. And they're always bad, including the Buddhist theocracies. And when I said that, there were, uh, there, there were a bunch of comments from people who were uh, lovers of the Dalai Lama, you know, big fans of the Dalai Lama, uh, getting all upset at me for having suggested such a thing, and people challenging me to come forth with actual data. And I did point to a video uh, by Penn and Teller, the magicians, called Bull uh, Hockey, <laughs> Bull Poopy. Bull S H I T. Anyway, uh, that talked about it a little bit. They interviewed a guy who was a Tibet expert who said a few things about what happened in Tibet before the dollar or before the Chinese takeover of Tibet and what the Tibetan theocracy, the Tibetan Buddhist theocracy, was like. But I didn't have any concrete examples to point to, like a specific incident. Uh, but now I do because I've been reading lately this book called All Is Change by Lawrence Sutton. The 2,000-Year Journey of Buddhism to the West. A very interesting book that I didn't even know existed until I found it at a used bookstore uh, near here, uh, which is why I love used bookstores. I would never have found this on Amazon, or, or I would never have found it at a new bookstore because it's not in print anymore. So I love used bookstores for these kind of things. But this is a history of... Buddhism and its interactions with the West, and one of these days I'll do a re review of it. I'm only about halfway through, if you can see where the bookmark is. And by the way, this book, interestingly enough, was written by the same guy who wrote this book, which I read years ago. This is a biography of the uh, science fiction writer Philip K. Dick by Lawrence Sutton, Divine Invasions. Uh, the guy who wrote the biography, or probably the definitive biography of Philip K. Dick, the science fiction author, also wrote this great book about... Uh, the Buddhism's journey to the West. In this book, Lawrence Sutton brings up a specific incident that happened in Tibet, uh, in the theocracy Tibet, when Tibet was ruled by the, the great Buddhist lamas and everything, and people think it was a paradise. And what happened was a, a particular Tibetan person, a uh, Tibetan Buddhist person, uh, told 
Madame Blavatsky, uh, who was the head of the Theosophical Society, and I should probably do a whole video on the Theosophists, but they were an early group who took ideas from Buddhism and Hinduism and popularized them in the West, mainly in the 19th century. Anyway, this guy uh, gave Madame Blavatsky access to some of the secret teachings of Buddhism uh, from Tibet. Well, the Dalai Lama, the 13th Dalai Lama, found out about this, and I'm going to read to you what he did. Now, remember when I'm saying this, that our Dalai Lama, the current one right now, is the 14th Dalai Lama. So this is the 13th Dalai Lama. This is the, the one before him, of which, if you believe what the Tibetan, Tibetans say about it, uh, the 14th Dalai Lama is the 13th Dalai Lama. So he claims to be the same guy, reincarnated. So this is the same guy reincarnated, if you believe that. I don't really believe that, but a lot of people believe that. So, you know, and probably some of the people who were leaving me those comments uh, believe that. So if any of you are still watching, you might be interested in what your Dalai Lama did. So here's what happened to the guy who leaked the secrets of the secret Tibetan Buddhist teachings to Madame Blavatsky. On, this is on the order of the 13th Dalai Lama, who, as I just said, is supposedly the same guy as the Dalai Lama today. He was arrested, imprisoned, flogged, and then flung, still living and with his hands tied behind his back, into the Tsiangpo River. The hands and feet of his servants, these are people who didn't even do anything, these are just his servants, had been cut off their eyes gouged out, and they were left to die in agony. Furthermore, the official himself, I guess this is the official who, who found out that this guy had leaked the secrets, uh, a high-ranking lama at the head of a monastery was condemned posthumously to eternal damnation, a punishment more to be dreaded than death by a devout Tibetan Buddhist. When, soon after his execution, now this is after the guy who leaked the secret got executed, after his execution, his reincarnation appeared in a small boy. That's when this uh, that happened. The child was callously abandoned. Frontier officials who let the intruder pass the checkpoint were also severely punished. And 19 years later, two other men who had been implicated were still in chains in a Lhasa dungeon. So there you go. That's what kind of a place Tibet was before the Chinese took over. Now, having said that, I think uh, everybody knows, and just so you know that I know, the Chinese are, the Chinese communist government is probably one of the worst governments on earth today as far as violating human rights and everything else. And so, yeah, maybe if the Dalai Lama, the current, the 14th Dalai Lama were returned to power, things would improve in Tibet. I, I would like to hope so, and that it wouldn't turn into a place like this again. But there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that things wouldn't just be worse. And from the, the sound of it, it sounds like Tibet these days under Chinese rule is, pardon me for saying this, probably a better place for most people than it was under the Tibetan Buddhist theocracy. And so the point of saying this, really, uh, not just to kind of go nya 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 to the people who led, left those comments, because they're probably not even watching, is that uh, theocracy is a bad thing, uh, no matter who's in charge, even when the Buddhists are in charge. It's not a nice place to live under a theocracy. Furthermore, it's about power and the corrupting influence of power and how bad people will get when they are given a great, a great deal of power. And who knows if our current Dalai Lama, he seems to be a very sweet, nice guy, but maybe that's only because he doesn't have access to very much power. I don't know. I'm not saying that's the case. But people can turn. 
very nasty when they are given positions of power, as a lot of us have seen when certain people in the medical systems in various countries in Europe and America were given extreme power in the past few years and turned very bad. Uh, because of it. Uh, so this, this is the kind of thing that happens. Uh, Tibetan Buddhists, doctors, uh, people you'd think would be trustworthy to be nice guys all the time, you give them a bit of power and they turn into real buttholes, uh, which is, uh, doesn't even begin to cover it. <laughs> that, uh, there's, no, there's no term insulting enough for someone like the 13th Dalai Lama who did this this thing. I mean, this is a terrible, terrible person. So we can say for sure that the 13th Dalai Lama was a terrible, terrible human being, reprehensible, awful human being. And the 14th Dalai Lama doesn't seem to be as bad, but then again, the same people who left me those comments about how great Tibet would be if he was in charge uh, believe that he is the same guy who did these terrible things. So there you go. I don't know uh, if there's any great conclusion to be taken from all this, but I thought I would like to point this out. And I, I think it's important to be aware of this and to realize this can happen. I, I, the things I've seen, the abuses I, I've seen and read about in, in Buddhist monasteries and things lead me to believe that even if you're a so-called enlightened Buddhist, uh, you can be a real uh, jerk. And, uh, yeah, maybe maybe it's access to power that does that. I'm, I'm not impressed by powerful people in general. Anyway, if you want to donate to making me a more powerful person by giving me a lot of money, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is, uh, let's see, about here, hardcorezen.info slash donate. Uh, there you'll find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main ways of becoming powerful and making money. Actually, they're, they're my main ways of making a living and buying dog food for Ziggy and everything else. So I appreciate your support. But as always, you don't got to donate if you don't want to donate. So don't donate if you don't want to. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Have a better time than the 13th Dalai Lama gave to that guy who gave the secrets of Tibetan Buddhism. See you later. Bye. He said, like, what you doing? What you doing upstairs? Are you looking for you looking for your doggy mama? I think she went downstairs. Yeah, maybe that's where we should go. Oh see, when I say downstairs, he looks over the stairs. I think he's learning that word. Alright. We'll see you later, Ziggy. Bye bye.